directors of the various departments and heads of the various departments of the university, my teachers, faculty members, participants, and dear students. Welcome to the seven days faculty development program on hands-on basic molecular biology techniques. The theme of the training program is to equip participants with the basic knowledge and skills required to function in a molecular biology laboratories. The workshop is jointly organized by Gourmet Degree College Idga and Department of Bioresource, University of Kashmir, under the Azadi Kamrut Mahotso, sponsored by Government of Jammu and Kashmir Science and Technology Department. We are highly thankful to the Science and Technology Department for providing us the platform to organize such a fascinating and wonderful event for the benefit of the teachers and students. We welcome you to this seven days online hands on uh, this offline hands on training in the field of molecular biology where we would like to involve these participants in different high sophisticated labs present in the University of Kashmir. We have devised the program in such a way that every participant gets uh, um, hands on practice in every department, whatever the equipments we have in different biological sciences and other departments of the university so that the participants will give a, get a know-how demonstration as well as hands on training in this program. As we know that the molecular biology has transformed the human civilizations across since the inception of coming of these technologies like PCR, we had the gel electrophoresis, then the X-ray crystallography and many others which helped us to at least discover the molecule of life which is the DNA with which we are playing at this level and doing whatever we wish to do it, from treatment of diseases to copy pasting of DNA material and so on and so forth. So uh, we have come a long way since then and the advent of hybridoma technology which has revolutionized the field of diagnostics we know. Monoclonal antibody creation by George Kohler and Sistar Milestein in 1972, for which they won the Nobel Prize in 1980s. It was the breakthrough, and it was only possible when we have the molecular techniques and technologies available with us. From that, we are now talking about the genome editing. When we say that the CRISPR-Cas, which is actually a defense mechanism found in the bacteria, but as of now, we, we wish to play with our genome, and we can modify the genome of humans and all other organisms for our advantage. So in this direction, then, we have the prediction of the diseases as well. As of now, we have been able to at least predict 1,500 different types of diseases of Mendelian type since the invent of the molecular technology techniques. So this all gives us an important insight that how much molecular biology has transformed and traveled a long way from 19th century to this 21st century. Then we talk about, as of now, personalized medicine or precision medicine, where instead of giving the medicines to whole group of patients or having the theme that we will be giving one drug to all, but we are now talking about the personalized or precision medicine where we can have the genetic information of a patient or a group of patients where we can provide them specific molecules or specific drugs to those person, persons at individual level. So this has transformed only because of the availability of these molecular tools and diagnostics. Then when we talk about the uh, precision agriculture, we are able to reduce the manpower, the costs of fertilizers, pesticides, and many things in there. Then we talk about, as of now, the creation of synthetic bacteria. At one time, we were dreaming about that there will be something life which will be synthesized. But Craig Venter and his team has led us to that, that they recently synthesized a uh, synthetic bacteria, that is a cell which is being produced synthetically. So these are some of the great achievements. Similarly, when we talk about the nano-encapsulation, we talk about the drugs or molecules to be in encapsulated within the systems and then deliver them to our target specific areas. So uh, uh, then the new field is emerging now because instead of going for a laborious drug discovery process which takes about years together and then takes billions of dollars, instead of that, why not to shift to computer-aided drug designing and then go for the drug repurposing models? This is also possible only when we have the molecular tools and diagnostics available with us. With these words, I, uh, I would like to say that our university, the University of Kashmir, uh, and particularly the uh, School of Biological Sciences has been at the forefront of using these molecular techniques and producing wonderful results. 
This is a testimony, our publication record at the international level, which has earned us a NAC accredited grade A++ university. We are hoping for that, and NAC A++ we are already having from the last NAC. And this is, this is an achievement. Once we go to the publication track record of the university, we are uh, in NIRF rankings at the 100 universities of the uh, country. Then when we talk about uh, different arenas of producing technologies, we are now moving ahead towards that to produce. And our department also is um, in the race. We have been recently established, and we are also trying to um, move ahead with the established departments like Department of Botany who had done a great work in the field of molecular biology. And uh, I would, uh, now the focus of the university and the major research institutes add, as the, the, the impetus has come from the top, from the Honorable Prime Minister Prime Modi sir's regime, once they started it, there had been folks on the startups, innovations, technologies to come into, into place. And then this transformation of uh, creation of technologies, research, and other things that should lead to the benefit of the society. There should be a societal and industrial connect between all of them. So in this direction, we want that the whatever research or things are being done at the university level or at the, uh, at the institution level, that should at least help the society in solving those problems. So we at the Department of Bioresources realized this and since 2019, we started in one of the healthcare sectors because breast cancer is one of the main problems in this part of the world. And after Bangalore, Srinagar is becoming now the breast cancer hub of the state because once we see the incidence rates of the breast cancer among women in across the India, after Bangalore, we fall at the second level. So in this direction, we had talked about, we, we, we are starting this and we are um, organizing various awareness programs in the society. We had started the research in this direction and since last two, three years, we had published almost 30 papers in the field of breast cancer research alone. Although the, <clears throat> the theory component has been, say, modified over a period of time, but the practical component by and large has remained the same. Very old Gesa Peter, right? And then there is no thrill in the practicals that we offer to students in the schools or in colleges, right? And actually, if there is no thrill left, there is no interest also, right? There are a couple of reasons for not being able to, say, revolutionize the practical component. I mean, you can't do science without practicals. This would be absurd thinking if somebody suggests that you can do with theory only and then never show a microscope to a student. This doesn't make any sense at all. There are a couple of reasons as to why this has happened. One is that the numbers in the colleges are very large. I mean, presumably they have not been able to meet the requirements of such a large number of students, right? The, the infrastructure may be, lab infrastructure also may be uh, limited, that said. But another issue which must be confronting them is lack of training as well. And you have nowadays the, the labs refurbished in colleges also, a lot of money has been spent in colleges as well. New infrastructure has come about. Equipments have also been brought. But by and large, I believe those equipments and those in that infrastructure has not been optimally utilized. Uh, one of the reasons probably is lack of training. The equipment is there, but the person does not know how to use it, right? And then if you are a bit ingenious, you can develop laboratory exercises with minimal inputs, and which could be very interesting. Right? In that sense, I believe that this, this, this course, hands-on training course, is very important. I must tell you of myself, I was in 80s, around 80s here. The, uh, we had heard of DNA, but never seen it. And then, uh, naturally, when anybody would talk about DNA, uh, we would be surprised, I mean, we would be uh, bemused also. Nowadays, a graduate student also does uh, get a DNA out of the cell. And imagine the predicament of our students. One of my students went to Canada. She told me that if the department had shown me what a micropipette is, half my battle was won. I was not knowing what this micro pipette is, although there were many, but I was not knowing. I mean, small things. I mean, it doesn't require that you have to actually give them, say, hands-on training from A to Z. It is not necessary. Instead, showing them what a PCR machine is like, how a buffer is prepared, how does a pipette work, right? It's, how does it work? This is also enough. This is also, uh, I mean, a lot of training, right? 
and then once they get to i mean understand as to how this instrument works then they have their way they will try they will fiddle with it and then ultimately they will learn actually how to do it right this is one i mean i am of this opinion that it should not be a stand alone <coughs> type of an activity once we had this, this this type of a training and then we discontinue it after say completing this course of 7 days i believe that the university could say formulate a plan with the department of science and technology say drawn over a period of say 6 months 8 months right covering all uh, um, the rural colleges as well and then train as many people as possible i mean this is the first there would be learnings from this program those learnings could be improved upon and then you can have a better program next time then you can have an even better program next time i mean this has to be a very continuous process second important i mean if 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 if, if you uh, those of you who have done research uh, you will understand i mean this is also a fact that we have to actually say uh, consider <clears throat> that we teach different we have been teaching in a particular way right and that also has created problems now we have been teaching students they will cram it and then they would ultimately write the exam and then get marks and then if they get very good marks so then there would be celebrations at home right we have never taught students say critical thinking and problem solving we have never taught them and that if you do not teach students critical thinking and problem solving don't remain under this impression that you are ever going to produce innovators you will not now <clears throat> i was once in china the german company had constructed a wetland and we are i mean familiar with wetlands who knows wetlands better than us a german company in china china developing a wetland for treating waste that was coming from companies now this is the essence of say teaching students say wetland science now you are you are you have theoretical understanding now you are converting that theoretical understanding into something very meaningful enterprise or a meaningful activity now that paradigm shift in teaching has to happen and then agreed you teach students botany you teach them plants but you now do not take them to the forest to for them to see themselves as to how these plants are arranged i mean it doesn't take much of money it doesn't take lot of money second important thing is that nowadays the idea is something very important if you do not have very brilliant ideas even if you have best of the equipment you have best of the facilities you are not going to flourish and then for those ideas you require good mentors also if your student tells a good idea that has to be picked up and then then pursued also this is that that is how the science progresses right the 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 lab component the infrastructure is also one of the ingredients but is not the most important ingredient the idea has to be great at that idea if it is pursued i mean we are going to actually say and do do reasonably good second important i mean if the those of you who do science when is when we sent out a paper for publication the river usually focuses more on methodology what are the methods that you have followed what has been the sampling size then what how, how you have analyzed the data in that in this part also we are lacking and some focus has to be on this part also in such type of programs now I, i mean i don't think that there is anything now left where you do not have the role of the high i mean high end these these uh, these uh, these data analytical tools say python or say r i mean if a student does not know in current times say has does not have knowledge of python or r he is not going to do good science present analysis of data is equivalent equivalent and then the presentation of data is also equally important right and then these tools and techniques have to be say imparted to the students uh, molecular biology tools agreed but the bioinformatics part of the bio, bio molecular biology is also equally very important which is theoretical and incidentally we have couple of people in the university who are doing exceptionally well in this field and then for research scholars as the honorable vice chancellor knows we are organizing a workshop here which would extend for a prolonged period of time wherein the students are going to be say <coughs> acquainted with the recent say statistical procedures for analyzing data Uh, this we will be doing for all the students who say ever wishes to uh, register around 150 students have registered i mean we are alive basically to the situation we understand that what role university of kashmir has to play we are also conscious of this that every department every institution in in jammu and kashmir cannot have 
uh, state of the art equipment. It is not possible. Incidentally, we successfully competed for this purse grant. We are getting, say, in instruments, they say, mass spec, seven crore um, equipment. You won't be having it everywhere. And then the University of Kashmir would be more than willing to extend those facilities to the, the, our colleagues in colleges, to research scholars in colleges, and then do, say, good work, right? I mean, certain nuclei have to be created with the support of Department of Science and Technology also. Uh, the duplication has, of the equipment has to be avoided as far as possible. And then whatever facility we have at the University of Kashmir, we will be more than willing to extend it to everybody. In fact, uh, what Manzoor Saab has already told about the University of Kashmir, we knack extra, but uh, we also figure in the list of QS international ranking at the slot of 450 to 500, in between the University of Kashmir falls in the QS international ranking. And uh, as I told that this is a university of 75 years old, we do have a rich human resource, we do have a rich libraries, and we do have a rich, rich rather laboratories also. I believe this year only we uh, purchased an equipment worth to, to our labs only, we purchased equipment around 15 crores. And we brought a machine, we purchased a machine of 8 crores. It is by the name of Mass Pack, which we have purchased part of the Center for Interdisciplinary Research. So University of Kashmir is trying to establish it. It is central facilities and research laboratories for the research scholars, not only for ourselves only, but to the institutions which are uh, we, we, which are in our neighborhood, whether it is cost, whether it is Sikmas, whether it is uh, Central University uh, Gandharbal, or whether it is IUST. But uh, what is the mandate or what is the genesis of today's hands-on hands -on training? I also, being registrar of the university, I also feel that this is very important. Because, because when we purchase such type of costly equipment, then to run these equipment is important. Two things which I personally feel as registrar are very important. One, to run these equipments, whether they are run in a proper way or not. And then the maintenance of these equipment is again in a Herculean task which we have to do. Otherwise, we end up uh, rusting those equipment in our labs uh, unnecessarily. So hopefully this today's training program will definitely benefit the research scholars and the, uh, and the teachers also for, for equipping them with the, with the sickle to run these equipment and also um, I hope they will come with a proposal how to maintain such a costly equipment in our labs. So under the leadership of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, we try within our resources, whatever resources we have, we try to particularly in the science department which is, has done a, which has which has also brought laurels to the University of Kashmir. Whether we go for the NAC, whether we go for the NRIF, whether we go for any other accreditation, definitely our uh, department from the science science subject biological or the uh, or other other science streams, they definitely contribute a lot into our ranking system. So the thrust area of University of Kashmir under the leadership of our Honorable Vice Chancellor remains that whatever we have established in the University of Kashmir, we will try to consolidate it, we, we will try to strengthen it, and we will try to support it further. And uh, today is an opportunity we will also request the Commissioner Secretary of Science and Technology and Innovation because now the buzzword is innovation also. We will request him that they will also support the University of Kashmir. We do have resources, we do have finances uh, under RUSA and the, some other uh, funding agencies have definitely uh, funded the University of Kashmir, but we definitely need a guidance from the Department of Science and Technology and particularly innovation, uh, which will hand hold out because, uh, because we go to the grassroots level innovators also. Very recently, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, we had a grassroots level uh, innovation uh, meet also at our Zokura campus. So I hope that uh, the Department of Psycho uh, Science and Technology in collaboration with the University of Kashmir and also the colleges which have been, which are affiliated to us, uh, we will definitely uh, like to work in collaboration and try to excel in every field in the University of Kashmir or in our affiliated and constituent colleges. Thank you all.
Vice Chancellor, uh, Kashmir University, Professor Nilofar Khan. Uh, with me on the dais, uh, Mr. Javed Agrewala, uh, uh, Professor from uh, IIT Robot. Nisar Mir Saab, the Registrar of the University. Uh, Professor Zafar Reishi, who is the Dean of Biological Sciences, uh, who just spoke before me. Uh, Professor Mohammad Jakub Baba, the uh, Principal GDC. Uh, with me, the team uh, uh, of the Department of Science and Technology uh, with uh, our additional director, Nasir Saab. There are other, other uh, joint directors and additional directors. Uh, CEO Jakida, who looks after the renewable energy in the state, uh, Darsa, uh, our other special secretaries and other uh, officers on planning. Um, and uh, Chisti Saab, the uh, um, you know, director for distance learning and other uh, heads of the department, deans, and most importantly, the students of this particular department for which uh, government has given us some duties. I would first like to briefly tell uh, Vice Chancellor Madam that all the uh, schemes of the Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science, Department of Earth Sciences, uh, Department of Atomic Energy and uh, Renewable Energy are handled by uh, the Department of Science and Technology at the state level. So we have uh, JK Science and Technology Innovation Council, uh, which was basically JK Science Technology Council. The word innovation has been added recently. So we also take care of the uh, schemes of the Ministry of Skill uh, and in re, uh, improving innovation and also uh, startups. So basically this particular department looks after science propagation, it looks after technology transfer, after a technology is developed in the universities it to be transferred to the industry. We look after sponsored research and extension programs, we look after innovation and patenting. It is our responsibility to get your projects patented for which we fully fund the project. We also do what is called science talent promotion sponsorship. We also create centers of excellence like we create biotechnology parks. We already have created two very big biotechnology parks, one in Handwara in the Kashmir Valley, uh, spending about 100 crore rupees, which is a dedicated biotechnology park for aromatic and uh, medicinal plants. And we are also looking for our staff and faculty for there. And I, I'm sure a lot of you will be able to get opportunities of jobs in that biotechnology park. We also have another biotechnology park uh, which is being created in uh, Kopwara. And uh, both these parks are physically ready in terms of infrastructure, but now the entire R&D and research uh, and uh, the input of faculty uh, has to be given. Uh, you all know that we are having a very, very, uh, you know, big blessing of nature that the Himalayan herbs and medicines of very huge uh, quality can be the input to the pharmaceutical industry and to research. Now, uh, the government of India is wanting to, uh, you know, get this uh, entire connect right from the, uh, you know, the biotechnological input into the research of medicinal plants, uh, taking out the products and converting them into industry. So already lavender is one of the area, the lavender oil has been identified by the government of India. Medical cannabis is another area which has been identified. Rose oil is, has been identified. And in the Jammu region, uh, lemongrass and other medicinal plants are being identified. So the entire money for documentation, research will be funded by these two biotechnology parks. And all of you, uh, you know, in future can work with for the future of JNK. In addition to this, uh, uh, the significant part of the work that we do is, we also propagate science and technology scientific temper. So in, uh, uh, you know, in Lal Mandi, uh, in Rajbagh, we are creating a very uh, big science city where we are trying to create uh, various kinds of centers of excellence, including incubation park, including a small robotic center, uh, you know, a small center for archeological related uh, issues. So various departments of the university can help us in curation and help us in uh, supporting that particular center. So we are spending around 25 crore rupees to bring up that center and similar center is also being created in the Jammu region. Now the most important aspect where we directly support the University of Kashmir is uh, that we uh, various research projects are supported by the department. Uh, we uh, basically uh, spend around 5 crore rupees uh, in the previous year and sponsor 123 odd uh, research projects. The idea is that you know all these researches can lead to development of certain industry. Now I would like to uh, tell uh, Vice Chancellor Madam that uh, since this project has really come up well, uh, now this year we have made a 13 crore rupee project where we will be sponsoring around 450 odd researches. So in which we want to give a lion's share to the University of Kashmir. So around 50 uh, projects uh, will be sponsored. In addition to this, we must uh, uh, also know that uh, uh, Honorable Lieutenant Governor is, a, is a himself a very big academist and you know that he was also a teaching faculty and he was chosen to be the first IT minister of the country. So he has a, a very good scientific temper. He's personally looking into all the scientific projects. So he has given us a mandate that certain areas where they would like to make research, especially rejuvenation rejuven rejuven of the Dull Lake or, uh, you know, the uh, waste to energy projects or, uh, you know, utilization of the Dull Weed to make energy 
or certain uh, certain Kashmir specific innovations. So I would welcome all all the young boys and girls here in the university and also the faculty. If you can come up with the Kashmir specific innovations, we are ready to fund it. And we can in over over and above these uh, 50 projects, we can also fund, fund some other projects which can be end to end projects. Uh, also in the field of renewable energy, since we are the de main mandated department, any research in wind energy, solar energy, biomass energy, uh, any of these areas, we are ready to fund those projects also. So today, uh, this uh, the MOU that we are signing with the, uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Madam, I think this will help us in expanding the ambit and the forward-backward linkages between the two departments. And as it is already, the University of Kashmir is participating significantly in the government of JNK. I would like to congratulate the uh, Registrar Saab, who was uh, appreciated yesterday by our Chief Secretary for developing the, the RAS system. A very good system has been devised, uh, the RAS system. Uh, which is the Chief Secretary. And in fact, in my previous assignment, I got the Prime Minister's award only because of the help of the Kashmir University, because uh, the previous uh, Dean Academic Affairs was uh, associated in building what is called the District Good Governance Index, where we, uh, we have identified 123 parameters on how to compare districts. And uh, I'm very happy to tell you that no state or union territory was before us could, which could develop this uh, system. And now Gujarat, Government of Gujarat, Arunachal Pradesh, and uh, Government of Haryana, they are learning this system from us. Recently, their officers had come. So I think that way already we are having a collaboration. But in the field of science and technology, the STIC will have a permanent relationship with the University of Kashmir. And uh, we are also we have also been asked by Government of India to conduct a very large investor uh, summit along with the innovation summit. So we want to have incubators and investors, startups to meet with the uh, you know people who can invest money. So if we have some very good innovators, we are trying to collect the list of innovators from various institutes. So the idea is to have 100 or 200 innovators who are funded by some major investors from Gujarat and other parts of the country so that that can be converted into industry. So that will be first of its kind. So for this entire funding is being given by uh, the DST and DBT to us, uh, Jitendra Singh Ji's department. So I think what I would like to exhort to the University of Kashmir is that both the Honorable LG as well as Jitendra Singh Ji sitting at Helm of Affairs, so we can get major funding at this, this time and we can utilize this, uh, this resource. I would also like to congratulate Vice Chancellor Madam for bringing about other reforms in the university, which we are closely watching from the government. So whether it is the, you know, the, uh, the attendance system here or the implementation of caste system and general improvement. Because the basic objective of government is that any student who wants to do genuine research or a PhD, uh, they should be encouraged. And I think that mechanism has been improved. And I think I would compliment the Vice Chancellor for that. And uh, I would like to also uh, you know, convey the regards of the, uh, from the government side on all the activities which are happening. I think this program is the first one. It will not be the last one. And we'll try to expand our uh, collaboration henceforth. Thank you. First of all, I must congratulate uh, the Department of Bioresources for roping in, uh, you know, GDC Inca, because uh, being our uh, one of the affiliated colleges, uh, it's our duty that uh, we should always, uh, you know, try to see wherever we can collaborate with our affiliated colleges, so that uh, it also gives them an opportunity to see, you know, where we can have input from their faculty as well as students. I'm really happy that. Uh, our Department of Bioresources and uh, Dr. Manzoor Ahmed Meer, who's, uh, you know, organizing secretary of this program, has thought of it. And, uh, in fact, we should think of other colleges also how to uh, rope in. About today's uh, program, that is seven days faculty development program on hands on basic molecular biology techniques. Uh, you have yourself said about it, Professor Zafar Saab said, uh, Soren Bhagat Ji said, and even our principal from Eidga said, that how important this particular uh, program uh, will be. We earlier also had uh, one of these, uh, you know, same type of program organized by our Department of Science and Technology. Uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, you know, uh, the sessions which have been planned will uh, really benefit our uh, faculty and scholars and students. As Professor Zafar Saab said that it's very important besides giving theoretical, uh, you know, information to our students, practical training is very important. Uh, uh, you know, I realize it myself also that it's very important. 
we had very uh, you know visionary statements by our uh, you know chief guest uh, 14 projects have been given funded to university of kashmir earlier they are ready to fund more but we should have the takers we should have the uh, innovators so i think from now on now onwards we have to uh, work for it under the leadership of uh, various uh, faculty members, I would request Zafar Saab also uh, to guide our uh, faculty and guide our scholars and students, uh, Manzoor Saab also, so that we really encash this opportunity. I'm aware sometimes the funding is there, but we don't encash the opportunity. Soren Saab has said himself that they are ready to fund such projects. Uh, we should definitely try to encash it uh, and I'm happy that uh, we are going to have the MOU with the Department of Science and Technology uh, which will further uh, strengthen our ties and uh, we will definitely uh, do uh, good. We were just having a side talk, he said how uh, intelligent our students are, how innovative our students are, no doubt about it, about the equipment of our students given the right direction, given the right uh, training, they can definitely uh, do wonders. Mm, uh, and uh, of course, uh, when uh, our uh, Commissioner Secretary talked about uh, funding the projects, I would definitely, you know, uh, see that we have Kashmir specific innovations, uh, which can fetch more name, uh, not only to the uh, you know, the innovator, but even to the institution and even to our duty. So let's try to have some Kashmir specific innovations. I would uh, like to inform our uh, Commissioner Secretary that we are start uh, starting integrated energy studies uh, program, master's program in our Kufara campus. We have a Kufara campus, but we had not started any program. We have already advertised the admissions very shortly we are going to have the entrance test and it will be the first uh, in uh, JNK this type of uh, you know study I would definitely look uh, forward uh, you know uh, to have collaborations with it and funding if we need somewhere uh, because uh, you know we have to develop uh, the infrastructure for this master's program in energy studies which is a very important uh, you know uh, study area uh, so, uh, with these words, and again, the Manzoor Saab, you know, talked about screening, uh, uh, screening and testing of uh, breast cancer. Uh, of course, you know, very alarming. Even I read, uh, breast cancer is uh, at rise in our UT, and uh, we need to. One of our duties is to have awareness and uh, screening and testing of. Uh, breast cancer in our uh, you know university long time back when I was uh, you know looking after the women's study center I used to collaborate with skims uh, I will disclose it today uh, in one of the camp we identified two ladies with breast cancer but it was first stage in another one we identified one lady but it was second stage so you see how important these are. Uh, I must, you know, uh, say that well thought of and please carry on wherever we have to, you know, uh, give any type of assistance. We'll definitely do it. Please go ahead with it.